Turkey Air has formally advanced one of its most ambitious naval projects with the official launch of the TF-2000 destroyer program, a move that promises to reshape both its fleet structure and its role in regional defense. Signed at the IDF 2025 Defense Exhibition between the Turkish Navy and ASFIT, the state-owned defense contractor, the agreement paves the way for construction of the first vessel at Istanbul Naval Shipyard. Steel cutting is set for November 2025, with the launch scheduled in 2028 and final delivery to the fleet expected by 2030. This announcement represents not only the start of a single warship, but the cornerstone of a broader transformation within Turkey's maritime strategy. For years, Ankara's naval modernization has revolved around the Milgem program, which produced indigenous corvettes and frigates. Yet the absence of a dedicated air defense destroyer left the Navy reliant on smaller, multi-purpose vessels that could only provide limited protection against modern missile threats. The TF-2000 is designed to close this gap enabling Turkey to field a ship capable of detecting, tracking, and intercepting aerial threats at long range. The contract signed by Asfit CEO Mustafa Ilbaz and Navy Commander Admiral Erkument Tatlioglu covers one ship for now, but the long-term requirement envisions a class of up to eight destroyers. Each will be built in about 60 prefabricated blocks, with the first block slated for completion before the end of 2025. By moving forward with this program, Turkey is signaling both industrial confidence and strategic urgency. The need for such a vessel has grown as regional missile arsenals expand and drone warfare evolves, leaving conventional naval platforms increasingly vulnerable. The TF-2000 is designed as a specialist warship, distinct from multipurpose destroyers that distribute their capabilities across surface, subsurface, and limited air defense missions. Instead, it will dedicate much of its displacement, energy generation, and onboard systems to radar arrays, vertical launch systems, and advanced combat management. This focus reflects its primary mission, to provide early warning, wide area surveillance, and layered missile defense for the fleet and for coastal infrastructure. In terms of specifications, the TF-2000 will measure 149 meters in length, with a displacement of approximately 8,300 tons. It will feature a beam of 21.3 meters and a draft of 5.75 meters. Propulsion will be provided through a combined diesel and gas turbine system, delivering speeds of over 26 knots and a cruising speed of 17 knots. Endurance is projected at up to 45 days without replenishment, with operational autonomy extending to 180 days without base support. The vessel's service life is estimated at more than four decades. The destroyer will host a crew of 180 to 210 personnel, with capacity to accommodate up to 240. Aviation facilities include a helicopter landing deck for 15-ton aircraft, alongside hangars suitable for two 10-ton helicopters or a mix of manned and unmanned aerial vehicles. Survivability is enhanced through stealth shaping, signature reduction across radar, infrared, acoustic, and magnetic domains, and hardened systems capable of operating in nuclear, biological, and chemical threat environments. Central to the TF-2000's combat power is the Midla's vertical launch system, with 96L split between the forward and midship sections. These cells will host a wide array of surface-to-air interceptors, notably the Cyper long-range missile family, the HIS-RD, and potentially next-generation systems like the Tubitac-developed G-40. Strike capacity will come from the Atmica anti-ship missile and the Gezgen land attack cruise missile, the latter offering ranges beyond 1,000 kilometers and enabling the destroyer to conduct deep strike missions against land targets. Anti-submarine warfare will be supported by VL ASROC systems, bow-mounted and towed array sonar, and lightweight Orca torpedoes. Gun armament will feature a domestically developed 127mm main gun, supplemented by point defense systems such as the Gokhtanis CIWS and potential installations of Goxer or Roquetsen Levent missile systems. Remote-controlled weapon stations will add flexibility for engaging small, fast-moving threats. At the heart of the TF-2000's defensive architecture lies a Selsen's Cafford radar suite. 
This system integrates dual band AUSA technology with an X band multifunction radar for precision tracking and an S band unit for long range surveillance. Together, they can track more than 2,000 targets at ranges up to 450 kilometers. Electronic warfare systems mounted above the radar panels will provide both defensive jamming and offensive disruption of adversary sensors. Electro optical directors laser warning receivers, and low probability of intercept navigation radars will complete a sophisticated sensor suite. These systems will all be tied into the Advent Combat Management Framework, enabling real-time data fusion across naval, land, and airborne assets. This integration positions the destroyer as not only a warship, but also a command node in Turkey's broader air and missile defense network. The TF-2000's introduction is expected to transform both operational doctrine and national defense planning. In fleet escort roles, the destroyer will shield high-value assets such as amphibious assault ships, logistics platforms, and eventually an aircraft carrier. In homeland defense, the vessel will integrate with ground-based air defense systems, extending the interception envelope far out to sea and adding layers of resilience against ballistic or cruise missile attacks. This dual role places the destroyer at the center of Turkey's Blue Homeland Doctrine, which emphasizes maritime control in the Aegean, Mediterranean, and Black Seas. By fielding a class of air defense destroyers, Ankara will be able to operate task groups in contested zones with far greater confidence, ensuring the protection of both naval forces and coastal infrastructure. Turkey's move into the air defense destroyer arena places it alongside a select group of nations. The United States Navy's Arleigh Burr class, Japan's Maya and Otago destroyers, South Korea's Sejong the Great, and China's Type 052D and Type 055 all perform similar roles. In Europe, the United Kingdom's Type 45, France and Italy's Horizon class, and Spain's Alvaro de Bazan are examples of specialized ships built to counter aerial threats. By pursuing an indigenous program, Turkey not only secures technological independence, but also demonstrates its determination to operate in the same strategic league as these established naval powers. Perhaps most striking is the TF-2000's capacity for future growth. The design allows for integration of new technologies such as swarm-capable UAVs, unmanned surface vessels, and even directed energy weapons. Turkish defense sources have already hinted at the possibility of equipping later units with high-energy lasers or electromagnetic railguns, technologies that could revolutionize naval warfare in the coming decades. Soft-kill measures, including decoys and electronic countermeasures, add further adaptability against evolving threats such as mass drone swarms. The launch of the TF-2000 program represents a watershed moment in Turkey's naval modernization. For the first time, the country will feel the destroyer purpose built for advanced air and missile defense, giving its fleet a critical shield against the threats of the 21st century. With advanced radar, long-range missiles, and provisions for next-generation systems, the TF-2000 is poised to serve as the backbone of Turkey's surface fleet for decades. As construction begins, the ship symbolizes more than national pride in engineering. It marks Turkey's determination to carve out a place among the world's leading maritime powers. If fully realized, a class of TF-2000 destroyers will not only protect the Turkish coastline, but also enable expeditionary operations, transforming Ankara into a serious blue-water naval player.